When it comes to the yen, 145 issues where we have typically seen intervention, the differentials this time around, does it make it harder for verbal intervention or any type of intervention, in fact, to have long-lasting effects? Yeah, certainly verbal intervention. I mean, we last September and uh, Q4 last year, when they were uh, very worried about the pace of the N2, we heard a lot from them, and so and they delivered on it. And I must say, if you'd asked me this time last year, I would have said they wouldn't be so silly. What's <laughs> what's the point? Uh, but they they did. So they they are they are willing to to act. I guess when they think things are very lopsided, but they will they, they will will know, or they certainly should know, that this is a, an unusually strong differential, and there's probably not going to turn around uh, too soon in terms of their, uh, the Bank of Japan's own monetary policy, uh, where they're targeting it. Uh, July meeting that doesn't sound as though they're likely to change as soon as. Then either, so long as they're doing that and the Fed is maintaining its tight policy higher for longer, then they can't realistically expect that there's going to be a, a sharp appreciation in the yen. So they can only really monitor where the speculators are. To that macro man piece that Sherry was just discussing, do you see further weakness in the yen versus, of course, we often talk about the yuan in terms of the trade dy dynamics actually having, you know, a, a significant impact on the stability of trading currencies and Asian currency valuation policy. I'm not sure if it's going to be that dramatic. I, I think that perhaps the key is that this is probably going to be a relatively short period. The, the, the Bank of Japan will change policy at, at some point. You think well, rather than what's been well, I think I mean in the big picture in terms of trade flows and um, the changes you'll get in exports and imports relative to currencies, that's something that's sort of a multi-month, multi-quarter, even multi-year response. Mm. So I think so long as the Bank of Japan indicates that it's getting closer to a change, whether it's three months from now, six months from now. I think that they're, and of course their inflation, they insist that it's still below target. I think that's that's something you can work through. I know the, the rest of Asia, Korea and so will be watching it closely. They don't want a super weak yen, but I think the time frame is not yet uh, likely to be dramatic for exporters. So what are the implications of the yen being so weak against other trading partners in the region, especially against the yuan and South Korean won, given of course that in terms of South Korea, there are still some exports that they compete against each other. Yeah, look, uh, there's no, no doubt uh, Yen Won is uh, watched very closely in Seoul. Uh, they will be monitoring uh, 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 the policy that uh, the Bank of Japan is pursuing and the Fed as well. But uh, I think that they've just got to be able to, to, to manage uh, through this potential, just probably relatively uh, short-term period of, uh, of uh, yen advantage in terms of uh, the export side. Uh, they've got to, got to plan ahead, look for ways uh, to try to get an edge because realistically they, they can't expect, uh, as I say, a sharp appreciation in the yen until there is that change in policy. And it could happen. I mean, remember that how, how sharply the yen appreciated in December last year simply from the widening of the, of the target band on the JGB. So no, I think they have to ride it out for now. And what are the implications of the weakness of the yuan when we have perhaps a little bit more clarity on what's going to happen with the PBLC? And it seems a continuity is the name of the game, but that continuity also seems to mean widening rate differentials with the likes of the Fed. And we're now seeing this record low funding cost of borrowing yuan. Yes, yeah, so the, the yuan weakness is very pronounced, as your chart showed. Uh, it's in trade-weighted terms as well, uh, and it comes despite very large trade surpluses still. So, uh, again, though, uh, we have very low inflation in China, so you can't really um, blame them for uh, allowing the currency to, to weaken in, in terms of uh, it's not causing inflation pressure that, that it would, uh, that a weaker currency is in many other countries. So uh, that's probably just going to continue. But, of course, we're not talking about free capital flows there. The interest rate differential does matter, but uh, there's still got, you've got those limits on, uh, on capital flows. So I think there, there is certainly a limit to how far uh, the yuan will be allowed to weaken. And we've actually still got it higher versus the US dollar over the next six months or so, back to about seven or below.